Hi, so we continue our reading and we enter in chapter one. Chapter one is entitled, What is a Concept? This chapter is more a series of axioms than the demonstration itself. So we'll follow the uh, phenomenological um, discovery that a first reader might have. We learn that a concept is a multiplicity, so some sort of a combination. And um, they called it a shift, which might be translated as number. It doesn't mean that the concept um, is ontologically mathematical as in philosopher by you know, by chiffre here is more uh, meant a reference to some form of alchemy um, some sort of formula perhaps even a magic formula there is no concept with only one component okay so it, it, it is an articulation of components and I would say it is a machine in the Deleuzean sense mm, which means that it is a not purely uh, a mechanical entity but a an articulation of matter flesh spirit that performs a certain kind of repetition. This is what the reader might think, but this might be adjusted by uh, the future chapters. They say that a concept possessing every component, right? So the sort of a hyper concept would be chaos pure and simple. Right? Now the way I read this is that well if there is the concept of concepts, it is chaos, but chaos in the Greek sense, chaos as creation, chaos as flow, virtual flow of infinite possibility. If it is the case, then a normal philosophical concept is an articulation, a machine within chaos that performs a certain kind of singularity. Escape the chaos might be, as they say, uh, might be one of the um, objectives of the concept. Okay, so the author of the concept is chaos, created chaos, what I call the creole. And the concept itself, a concept, is a fragmentary whole. So here we may ask, is it a microcosm? Does it reflect in certain ways uh, the um, usual, the, um, the model negotiation that any concept might have with uh, chaos or are there many ways of doing concepts all concepts are connected to problems without which they would have no meaning and which can themselves only be isolated or understood as the solution emerges okay so here's the idea that there is perhaps not one problem that philosophical concepts are trying to solve. We might think that. We might think that basically, uh, as um, again a philosopher like Badiou proposes, uh, 
philosophy, each philosopher tries to propose a pathway to what a good life is via um, a complicated machine, a, a conceptual machine, a theoretical machine. So the term problem here um, might need to be clarified in the sense that uh, it is very common in, in the French system uh, and in which philosophy is taught at the uh, end of uh, gymnasium high school uh, to speak of philosophical problem. For example, um, determinism versus free will. It is also true that today the term problem is used in uh, corporate capitalism and uh, more precisely in the discourse of startups. Right? A new company, a new startup is supposed to solve a problem. If it doesn't solve a problem, it is not considered um, financially viable, among other reasons. So then they have this sort of um, example or, or metaphor or evocation of the appearance of someone, you, you, there is some sort of a, a void plane, which might remind the Heideggerian um, clearance, and suddenly emerges a face, right? And, and that's the concept of autrui in French, I think that's uh, the term they use. Okay, so it might be or three. I'll, I'll check. Um, so in in English, it's translated by the other person, which is less uh, familiar. Autrui is a, is a quite familiar concept, and in in, in French, uh, and then they, without quoting uh, Levinas, they mention this idea of the face, the face of the other person as being a manifestation of the concept of otherness, alterity. That concept, for example, has a history, and they mention every concept has a history. The concept of the other person goes back to Leibniz, to his possible worlds and to the monad as expression of the world. Every concept having a finite number of components will branch off towards other concepts that are differently composed but that constitute other regions of the same frame. Answer to problems that can be connected to each other and participate in a co-creation. So, um, here is interesting because the concept of co-creation is again today too often heard in the marketing or corporate discourse but here it simply means that well if if a concept is created and not in the sense that uh, it is created ex nihilo once and for all it is a creative becoming a fold in the manifold which is itself a creative manifold, a hyper-creative manifold, the chaos that they mention, well, it articulates, it falls with other concepts, and if it is a machine, um, it might 
actually join with other concepts to create bigger machines. In the sense of a concept is never something simple that the question is can it be divided uh, into parts can we understand its parts and they will try to do so with Descartes cogito they even um, come up with a diagram but um, here we already completed the um, regular 10 minutes so I will just finish here by saying that in the next pages that we will examine tomorrow they propose, they don't demonstrate yet, but they propose that uh, the concept is an opening to an event. It speaks the event. So the notion of event is very important in French philosophy. Again, for Badiou, but since Sartre and what does it mean well we'll 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 have to answer that very slowly because this is the question of philosophy also is that can philosophy um, be creative not only of concepts but also of events and for example, uh, 1968 in uh, Paris, May 60, it was considered was called an event. Is it an event? And is it historically productive? Or is it um, a reaction? So that's it for today. See you tomorrow.